Hi, my name is Steven and welcome back to my channel. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you about battling loneliness, conquer and thrive by being by yourself. When most people think about loneliness or spending time by themselves, they conjure up negative connotations to this. Most people think that spending time by themselves is the worst thing imaginable, but that's not the case. As humans, we are social creatures and we're conditioned to be around others all the time. So when we're by ourselves, we tend to think about all the negative connotations associated with being by yourself. Especially in the last couple of years since the pandemic has raged on, this has been at the forefront of a lot of people's minds. People who wouldn't otherwise be by themselves now spend hours if not days and weeks by themselves due to the lockdowns. We all feel lonely at certain times in our lives, but if we reframe it, we can otherwise come out of loneliness stronger as a result. And we can turn being by ourselves to our advantage going forward in the future. Instead of dreading it, you can explore and reflect on your life that you otherwise wouldn't if other people were around you constantly. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about why loneliness is needed, my tips on thriving by being alone, and also my general thoughts on loneliness. And before we start, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, hit that notification bell, share with your friends if you like this content. And let's go. First, a little bit background on loneliness. So when I talk about loneliness or being alone, I'm talking about when you're isolating yourself and you're not spending time with other people. This can be in the form of physically not being around other people or turning off your social media. And it's basically disconnecting everyone for a period of time. So let's first talk about why we need alone time in the first place. Number one gives perspective. When you're by yourself or alone, it can give you another perspective that you wouldn't otherwise get if you're with other people all the time. I look at being by myself in one of two ways. First, as a vacation to help me rejuvenate, or a second to help me process through things. Both of those situations give me a different perspective on my life that I wouldn't otherwise get. When you leave the presence of others behind, they no longer influence you, for better or for worse. So that means their judgments or biases are not affecting you anymore. You can think through things unfiltered and through your own lens. You can look at life's problems or issues in a new way that you wouldn't otherwise if you were clouded by other people's judgments or thinking. This can really help you because if you have a complex problem that you need to solve by yourself only, then you can put yourself in a situation where you're only looking at it from your perspective without others clouding your judgment or influencing you in any way. Silence and isolation can help focus the mind where you otherwise couldn't if you were around other people. And you can look at different problems or issues in your current life with new perspective. Number two, life is noisy. People don't often understand how noisy life can be, especially if they live in the city. When you're seeking out time by yourself, you start to realize how quiet things can get and how that can help you de-stress. Because no longer you have that noise in the background, always constantly distracting you from one thing or the next. Since I have lived in noisy cities all my life, I only really understand how quiet life can get when I'm away from the cities. In my free time, I usually try to get away from people and go to remote destinations for my vacations. And in those places, it really helps me to rejuvenate and come back fresher because I'm no longer stressed about being in a noisy situation. The background noise that I'm talking about is really noise that's distracting me from focusing in on whatever I need to think about. So it really doesn't matter if you're an introvert or an extrovert. Sometimes you just need to be by yourself and observe the quietness that is. As life gets more complicated and noisy, we owe it to ourselves to care for our bodies as best we can. So one of the first steps is to just try to get ourselves in a situation where we can hear ourselves think. Number three, processing the past and the present. One of the biggest reasons why people like to be by themselves is to help them process what's going around them. When we have a lot of time to ourselves, we can allow our mind to be still and quiet so that we can process what's going on in our ever complex life. In the old days, life was slower and you didn't have all the distractions that you have in a modern life. And so it was a lot easier to have downtime or time where your brain is just not engaged in anything. But now there's so many things that are distracting us away from trying to process what we're going through. As a millennial, I still remember the time where I was actually bored when I was a little kid and there was nothing to do. And so during that time, I would just think through problems or issues that I had. But now in my 30s in this modern day lifestyle, I just don't feel like I have the time to do anything anymore. I feel like I'm always trying to rush through one thing or the next thing and never processing whatever just happened before. You know, I feel like I don't have time to just dwell on things that just occurred. Accomplishments, disappointments, problems, they just get swept under the rug when something new appears. So by spending time by yourself, you can slow down and start to realize all the things that you've missed in the meanwhile. Here are some of my tips on thriving by being alone. Number one, reframe the experience. Being alone isn't a good or bad experience, it just is. 
So when you're struggling spending time by yourself, think of it as a vacation. Reframe the experience of being by yourself to something positive. One of the hardest things to do is disconnecting from all the negative connotations there are about being by yourself. And certainly being lonely by yourself over a long period of time can be very harmful for your health. But I believe seeking aloneness in moderation can help you become a stronger individual when you come back out to society. For example, when you're trying to seek out being by yourself, it can be thought of as what you're doing when you go on vacation. When we go on vacation, we're not actively trying to seek out being by ourselves, but it can be thought of in the same context. We are trying to distance ourselves from our present day life. When we try to reframe being alone in a neutral or positive context, we help to rid ourselves of the loneliness stigma that's attached to it. Number two, make an agenda. Loneliness without an agenda is a terrible experience. When you have a lot of time by yourself, always try to plan something for the future. Have something to do each and every day, even if that's something to do is as simple as just meditating or reflecting on your life. The point is, people struggle the most when they're by themselves and have nothing to do. The lack of purpose and direction when you're by yourself can eat away at people. So for example, in my younger days, I would have a lot of time by myself and I would just play video games and I would just waste the day away. I didn't have an agenda. And I really felt bad because I wasn't productive with my time. I felt that that time to myself was a waste. Games are not inherently bad, but the way it made me feel afterwards was. So now when I have free time on my hands, I try to plan out things to do each and every day, even if it's not a lot of things. I just make sure that I have an agenda in place so that I don't become bored in my time alone. Some days I can go on a hike, sit at a park, or even just journal. Being alone doesn't have to be a painful experience. Have an agenda so you can occupy your mind with things that you can do. Number three, listen to yourself. Anybody that's spent a lot of time by themselves can tell you that they've learned a lot about themselves by listening to their true desires. Our brains are always in the background working on stuff and processing stuff. So for example, if you're in a quiet place and you're focusing on yourself, you can start to realize that your brain's solving various different problems in your life without you even knowing it and it can tell you the answers to those problems. The times that I've been by myself has been the most helpful for me because throughout my life, I've had a lot of problems and issues that I needed to resolve. And my mind would give me solutions that I didn't really think about before and it would help me along the process. So things like what kind of friends should I have, what things I value, and what am I really interested in life have all come to me in quiet times. Being around others, you can still come to the same conclusion, but it's not the same experience. You know what's best for you, and sometimes you just need that quiet environment to tell you what you truly want. Number four, appreciate the silence. When you're by yourself and in a quiet environment, appreciate the silence that is. For me, this was a big revelation. As a child, I always wanted a noisy background. Whether it was a TV or a radio, something always had to be noisy. And this noise was comforting to me because I didn't know anything about silence at the time. But here's what happened. When I moved out of my parents' house and into my apartment for the first time, I was in complete silence. And I realized how much I really appreciated the silence, the lack of noise. Because the world we live in now is so noisy and so complex, it's always a distraction. And I started to realize how grateful I was to be in moments of peace and quiet. Not everything has to be in your face, noisy and loud. So it might be hard to do, but this is a big key, is to accept the silence when you're by yourself. I know this is challenging because for me, when I switched from a noisy to a silent world, I couldn't stand the silence, the lack of sound. And it really took me some time before I was able to develop the appreciation for silence. And I was able to adjust because I realized that the world is getting noisier and noisier. It's never going to get more silent. So appreciate it while you still have it. And number five, pursue creative activities. One of the best ways to thrive by being alone is to have hobbies and creative pursuits. Being alone really gives you the opportunity to thrive in a creative space, whether that's making art, writing, or something else creative. These are activities that require deep concentration and focus, and so being alone really helps with that. Because like all things creative, it works best when you're not distracted all the time. So pursuing creative ventures is an excellent way to spend your alone time. As a kid, I was my happiest when I let my imagination run wild and I was able to do creative things with it. I was able to tap into my deep focus and concentration on truly creative pursuits while I was being by myself. So when you're planning your alone time, try looking into hobbies and creative pursuits to try to fill in your alone time. So now let's talk about some of my general thoughts on loneliness. Throughout my 20s, there was a lot of time in which I was functionally by myself. 
I was always moving to a new city every couple of years and I didn't know anyone there. But out of all that time by myself, I realized how much of the silence and being by myself helped me to process all the things that I was going through. And I was able to work through a lot of my problems and issues from childhood that I did not otherwise have time or the space to do. And in the end, I was really appreciative of the silence and stillness that I'd grown accustomed to because I was able to take that time and get to know myself better. I am mostly an extrovert, but now I don't feel bad when I have to spend some time by myself alone. So those are some of my thoughts on battling or overcoming loneliness. Now more than ever, I think everyone needs more tools in their toolbox to help combat loneliness and being alone. Being alone can be an asset and can help strengthen them, not just weaken them. If you're able to thrive around a lot of people or just by yourself, then when you're confronted with that situation, you're more resilient towards it. So you can feel more comfortable in either situations and you don't feel bad for it. So the keys to defeating loneliness is to reframe the situation, listen to yourself, and accept the silence. Once you're able to spend time by yourself, you'll see all the benefits that it brings, both in the forms of glorious silence and the ability to process different things in our lives. So thank you for watching. Please leave me a comment down below on whether or not you've truly been by yourself and whether or not you learned from that experience. And I'll see you next time.